Welcome back to r slash legal advice, where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community and without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, UPS dumped around $10,000 worth of product in front of my store at 10 pm on Friday night, long after I was closed over a week ago. My supplier is blaming UPS, UPS is blaming me and refusing to do anything. What can I do? I run a hobby shop in New York state, I have a supplier who I have worked with for years who typically sends me my product via UPS. UPS has been massively delayed due to the virus and I went from getting orders multiple times a week to basically almost nothing for the last 8 weeks. I had nearly a 100 packages sitting in UPS distribution centers, some of them have been forever stuck in the state of out for delivery for weeks now to things basically entering the black hole of the local distribution center weeks ago with no updates. This hurt my business pretty bad, which was already suffering due to the virus, as a lot of this stuff was items people had either prepaid or waiting for me to get my hands on. On June 26th, when I was more or less in bed, I suddenly got a slew of delivery notifications from UPS around 10 pm. Since I live a good 45 minutes away from my store, I freaked out and by the time I managed to get there, the stuff delivered had been taken, I checked the CCTV for my store entrance and probably 10 minutes after UPS dumped the packages, some people came by and picked up all the items and took off. I made a police report and passed it along to UPS as they had completely screwed up. On Friday I got an update and UPS had closed all my claims stating that it was signed for. The signature was basically the word <clears throat> virus, which from my understanding is UPS not requiring signatures due to the virus. The following blame is going around in a circle. First, my supplier is blaming UPS and how it is not their fault and tells me that they fulfilled their obligation and I need to contact UPS. Second, my supplier does not have any more of some of the products, so I cannot actually fulfill many people's orders now. Number 3, UPS is putting the blame on me, stating that it was signed for and is refusing to discuss it more. And a user in the comments said, save the footage, that is your proof the packages were not signed for. You are going to have to lawyer up and go against UPS, since this cannot be solved via customer service any longer. And another person said, not a lawyer, but I work in shipping. You need to dispute the claim resolution, send a copy of the video clearly showing the product delivered while you were closed. Send the same video to your supplier, because they are the shipper of record and the claim is on their account. You are correct that UPS is deep in the weeds, they are also losing money hand over first, so they are going to fight you. And guys, did you ever have any issues with packages being delivered, especially by UPS? If you have something interesting to share, please feel free to let us know in the comments. And by the way, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to show your support in the comments by posting some star emojis. In addition, it would be absolutely incredible if you could like the video as well. Thank you so much in advance. And the next one is an update to the UPS story. So after talking to a lawyer, he wrote a strongly worded letter to my supplier, basically outlining that they are responsible for losses incurred during shipping, FOB shipping, my supplier has changed their tune drastically after that letter and refunded me. Unfortunately, they have decided to no longer do business with me anymore, which hurts a lot. UPS, however, is still a complete and utter mess, but someone told me to send it to a local UPS store via UPS My Choice, which actually worked for some packages, while others seem to be stuck in internal limbo and are just not moving. Anyways, with my lease renewal coming up, I have more or less just decided to start winding down operations in the coming months and plan to close my store by the end of the year. 
This is not a happy ending, but between the virus, this screw up, having issues getting products my customers want, I simply would rather just wind things down rather than trying to keep something going that is not profitable. And you know guys, I gotta say, the economic side of this whole pandemic is almost as bad as the human side, meaning that a lot of people died, because especially here in Thailand, I cannot really speak for Europe as I am not living there at the moment, but here you can see tons of people every day lining up for free food and supposedly millions of people are unemployed now. Don't get me wrong, Thailand's response to COVID was really good because we have only around one or two new cases per day here and they are usually in state quarantine, so no cases outside of that, but still the economic impact of this whole pandemic is extremely tough. How are you affected by all of this? Have you maybe lost your job? Let us know in the comments. And the next one is titled California, woman in my garage has five people living with her. I own a house in Southern California and have my garage rented out to a woman for the last two months. Her lease states that she is the sole tenant with no sublet without my permission. However, she has had this man staying inside the unit with her the entire time. We have ring cameras set up on the property, so I get notified whenever someone comes and goes. He has not left the property for more than a day or two since she moved in. When I met him the first time, I sent an email to my tenant explaining he needs to be on the lease. However, she assured me her friend is only a guest and won't be there much longer. Two weeks went by and when he did not leave, I gave her one more chance to add him to the lease, but she insisted he was not staying. I served her with a notice to perform or quit, allowing three days for him to vacate. She then tells me this man is her husband, but spells his name differently several times in the email back and forth and that he was not supposed to be here, but is here now since the pandemic altered his previous plans. She had him leave for two days after the notice, but he's back as well as several other people who are now here all the time. I know this because their cars block my driveway now, as well as ring camera footage of people coming and never leaving the unit. My issue, other than the contract breach, is that her rent has utilities included, so she's been spiking the energy and water bills with all these people and I am out of work and can no longer afford to support 5 people living in my garage. When I calculated the rent totals, I was expecting one person in the unit and mentioned this as a very important aspect in signing the lease. She has been taking advantage of me and the utilities and I am unsure what to do at this point. And I've been very patient with her. What can I do now that she has violated her contract several times? Edit, thank you so much for the responses so far, I wanted to edit that the garage is a converted unit, it is a studio apartment with full kitchen and bathroom, all legally permitted. I don't know how she fits 5 people in the unit comfortably, but then again, she is insane. And a user in the comment said, bad tenants are a risk of being a landlord, do you have a certificate of occupancy to use the garage as a dwelling unit? Is the lease a month to month contract or longer? Is your tenant current on rent payments? If you have a month to month rental agreement, it is the simplest to serve her a termination notice that ends her tenancy in 30 calendar days. If not, then you need to send a notice to quit that cites an incurable breach. Usually those are more serious, damaging the property, committing crimes on the property etc, but repeated violations of the sublet agreement have a decent chance at succeeding in an eviction. Both of those will need to be backed up by an eviction suit if she does not leave. Of course the pandemic has appended civil process everywhere, this is unlikely to qualify as an emergency eviction and California's eviction moratorium has been extended until September. LA County's guidance FHQ for example prohibits no cause eviction and non-payment evictions and virus related violations due to unauthorized occupants, pets or nuisance. And guys I would love to know, if you have ever been a landlord, did you ever have any horrible tenants? Or maybe have you yourself ever been a horrible tenant? Let us know about some stories in the comments. 
And the next one is an update to the insane woman in garage story. If you commented on the OP, thank you. I read every comment as well as talked to a lawyer and a damn real estate agent to cover all my bases and see what I could do. Which I learned was pretty much nothing except talk to her and wish for the best since there is a moratorium on these types of cases due to the pandemic. The eviction process would most likely take much longer than her lease. Since I posted, the majority of the guests have moved out. So it is mainly her husband, which I am still unsure if it is really her husband, living there without permission. So that is the good news. I emailed her yesterday, tried to be as nice as possible, while also asserting myself letting her know that our security cameras caught her guests staying on her property much longer than the 48 hour limit on which a guest becomes a tenant per her lease. I sent her copy slash pastes of the specific clauses she has been violating, gave an overall rundown of my concerns, reminded her that I have been very patient and understanding as a neighbor, but as a landlord I am no longer willing to put up with the shenanigans. I sent her one final 3 day notice to perform or quit and ended the letter asking her nicely to abide by the lease this time and hopefully we can go back to being amicable neighbors. However, if this behavior persisted, she would be sent a 30 day notice to vacate, reminding her any breach of contract following a warning will make her lease null and void per the contract, once again quoting directly from our signed agreement. She emailed me back very upset, telling me she in no way violated her lease. Her guest was only that, a guest, and that my camera footage was faulty, flawed, and erroneously stipulated. She also let me know she spoke to her attorney and knows that she has not violated anything in our lease. There was a lot more in that email letting me know that having camera footage as proof as her feeling more like harassment and she now has anxiety and that she's doing more wrong than good since most of my emails to her have been negative. In other words, me telling her, don't let your dog pee on my driveway, please don't smoke near the house and please don't leave the birds in a pile on my lawn. Honestly, I wish I could quote the entire email because she is just... Uh, crazy. So yikes, I don't know how to respond to her email, so I won't. I've decided to let this woman win and focus on getting an additional meter installed so I don't have to deal with added expenditures for my next tenant. If I decided to open this can of worms after she leaves or as one user suggested, just buy a bunch of MJ plants and grow those in the garage instead. And I gotta say guys, I am very surprised that the OP just let this crazy woman win. Kind of sad that the entitlement won in the end. And the next one is titled, Ex-Fiancé tried to steal and destroyed my property. My ex-fiancé showed up at my apartment last night and demanded my engagement ring back. I had previously told him not to come because he was acting crazy, so I called the cops, but after an hour of him not showing up, I thought he was just trying to get a rise. He later called and was more civil and said he wanted to drop off stuff I left at his mom's and I told him as long as he was civil and didn't try to steal or destroy property or attack me, he could drop my things on the front porch and leave and I would stay inside with my door locked. When I wouldn't give him the ring because it was a gift and because he's the one who decided to sleep with other people, he tried to steal my property. I opened the door to get evidence of him stealing and called the cops and he wrestled my phone out of my hand and broke it, destroying my property and preventing me from calling 911. The police who showed up said it was only criminal mischief and that they cannot arrest him until I press charges at the courthouse after the holiday. I am just wondering if I have a case other than just criminal mischief. My phone is the newer iPhone 6s and cost around $650. He also prevented me from calling 911 and I don't know if I could possibly get an EPO or something like that because he is continuing to attack me after our breakup and showing up at my apartment when I repeatedly ask him not to. And by the way guys, I'm sorry, I'm not exactly sure what EPO means and any Google searches I tried did not really gave me any satisfying results. Either way, edit, 
Lots of people are talking about the ring instead of focusing on what happened, the ring is not the issue here. If he took me to court and the judge ordered it back, I would return it of course, even though I believe the ring is a gift and he's the one who broke the conditions of it, not me. But instead of going the legal route, he tried to steal and destroy my stuff and attacked me. Added, people continue to focus on something that is a non-issue here. I have text messages where he said he handed it to me and I could keep it. It amazes me that people justify violently attacking someone when he could have gone the legal route months ago. Edit number 2, attorney actually told me that I can legally keep the ring for the people who were obsessing over that instead of the actual question. EPO has been filed and charges have been pressed, ex-fiance is now begging me to drop charges because with his drug charges it won't look good. And a person in the comments said, have you tried filing a restraining order? Call the police non-emergency line now and inquire about that. You fit the general requirements which are violence and repeated unwanted contact. While on the phone ask about the interfering with emergency services charge. And another guy said, regarding your edit, things get a little crazy here on the weekends when the actual lawyers are not spending a lot of time on reddit. I am not a lawyer but from what I've seen, the real lawyers say in the past if he told you you could keep it and confirmed that via text, you are probably set on that front. You are also absolutely correct that a dispute over the ownership of the ring in no way justifies violence, theft or destruction of property. I'm frankly disgusted that so many people are implying otherwise. Update to the crazy fiance story. This is an update to a recent question I posted regarding my ex fiance. It has been a little over a week and it has been a slow moving process. I visited with an attorney Tuesday morning, I couldn't do on Monday due to the holidays according to the cops who came to my house Saturday, after speaking with her she encouraged me to get an EPO which the court granted rather quickly and I have court for that on the 9th. I guess to keep it standing and I'm not quite sure what to expect. In the meantime I have pressed charges on my ex fiance and will be pressing charges on his girlfriend tomorrow, we couldn't do them at the same time as we had to wait to see if my apartment complex had footage of the incident, the attorney I spoke with said it will likely be a trespassing charge. She also said that I was never legally obligated to return the ring and if he had felt he had a right to it, he could have gone the legal route and taken me to court and if they decided I should return it, they would never make me pay him the full $350, he would just get the ring and could pawn it or whatever. Two days ago my ex fiance broke the EPO and contacted me three times asking me to drop the charges because it will affect his current drug charge and he wants to be a nurse so he is afraid that these charges will keep him from that. I did not report him breaking the EPO because he said that he wasn't aware of it yet when I first informed him and I am not that petty. Petty, sure, just not that petty. He apologized for his behavior that night and offered to pay me back if I would drop the charges. He also apologized that his new girlfriend opened the door and let my cats outside. But I do feel like he's being manipulative and is only sorry that he got in trouble. I decided that I probably should not drop the charges and that if he contacts me again, I should report him for breaking the EPO because all he is doing is messing with my head and trying to play my emotions so he won't get in trouble. And guys unfortunately we have already reached the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe youtube where I upload exclusive reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from youtube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.